Hello and welcome to the explainer video for Your Strongest Year Block 8. So, as in the other videos, we're going to discuss the concepts behind the program and go through in a bit more granul granular detail the ins and outs of the block design and how you should go about executing this month of training. So, as per usual, you can see up in the top left, we have the total lifts and the average intensity for the block you'll see that this block is relatively static so the the variance in this block is going to come from the application of the rpe concept which we are introducing so this block leans heavily on a lot of the work and pop popularization of auto regulatory periodization and rate of perceived exertion all of which are covered in a more detail along with an hour-long talk from mike tushiner the head coach at reactive training systems who is popular for popularizing a lot of these concepts. He does a really good job of explaining bottom-up planning versus top-down planning when it comes to the planning of training, specifically to powerlifters, but there's a lot of concepts in here that we can take away for training of pretty much anyone or any athlete, allowing the actual person's adaptation, the athlete or the lifter's adaptation to the training dictate and the data dictate where it's taken as opposed to trying to apply a top-down scheme ir irrelevant or irrespective of how the actual scheme is interacting with the real world. That is the adaptation you're seeing in the athlete and the fluctuations in things like fatigue levels, um, preparedness to train, and all the rest of that jazz. So this is following uh, an upper-lower split. Oh, sorry, this is going. Sorry, we're going back to uh, four total body sessions in the week. We've got a squat, bench day, deadlift, and bench assistance. Squat and bench day, deadlift and bench assistance. So for the main lifts, we're following a pretty simple scheme. We have a top set of five, followed by three down sets of five. So a four by five setup with the, with a top set and then three back down sets, and that's basically going to form the meat and potatoes of the program when it comes to the main lifts or the focus lifts, the lifts that we're trying to get stronger on. With the assistance, we're following a very simple scheme where we're doing five by 10 for the first two weeks, just increasing the intensity 5%. And then for the final two weeks of the program, we're going to drop a couple of sets and add some intensity. So a linear increase in the intensity over the, over the, um, over the assistance with a drop in the volume. And that's where that 40 reps, uh, you can see there where we go 360, 360, 320, 320 as, regar as regards total lifts in the week. That's where that drop in volume comes from. And that's where the linear increase in the intensity comes from. So the whole idea of the block is to follow the RPE concept more closely. So you can see we're setting here the first set of five, we're looking at an RPE eight. So that should mean you have two reps left in reserve for that set and then an RP7 on the back down. And we're keeping that constant for the first two weeks or the first, or the whole block even. <laughs> Man, that I just look like an idiot. So we're looking for an RP8 for the top set and an RP3 for the down sets. And a suggested in increase of 2.5% per week but of course by adhering to the rpe you could find that you're actually able to increase more so here in this example you can see the squat max is set at 293 so the first week the guide load is a top set of five at 235 and the next week you see the guide loads 242 or 243 so with the nature of this kind of programming you might find that after performing in week two 243 for a set of five you actually felt like it maybe had three or four reps left in there. So you're an RPE point down or maybe even two RPE points down on where you should go. So you might end up taking a higher a higher load. So you might end up doing 250. So, you, so the whole point of the, or the, 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 the converse could be true. You could find on week two that the 242 is probably not going to. You might find warming up that the 242 or the 243 is going to be too heavy for that RPE. So you might elect to take the same load again. So repeat two, three, five from last week, or even maybe do a lighter week that, or do a lighter um, weight. So maybe you do two thirty, 
as an example. But the, the idea is that it should map your recovery better. So the days when you are more recovered, the days when you feel better, the days when you can give more, you give more and get a higher stress, a higher stimulus in that day. And then conversely, days when you don't feel as good, days when you're less recovered, it allows you to, to do a less, less stressful workout, a less stressful load. So you're mapping your recovery better. So when you feel good, you can go heavier, progress faster. When you're feeling beat up, you're feeling tired, you're feeling weak, you can use more constructive loads that are maybe going to be a bit, bit of a stimulating workout and less of a stressful workout. So we're not going into a situation where we're calling for 250 kilos for five, you warm up, you feel shit, and then you just hail marry it and go for the top set and maybe get two, and then all of a sudden the wheels come off the bus. So it's just introducing you more into setting a micro cycle out, so a week of training out, and then just kind of letting that ride and using the RPEs and how you you feel like you're um, adapting to the RPEs to let that try and dictate the, the load selection rather than just blindly following the suggested two and a half percent we have baked in the two and a half percent into the suggested loads or the guide load just so there's some um there's some trend of progression during the block uh but the whole idea and that's put across well put across in the video and what's been put across in the supporting article for this block is for you to embrace the rpe concept and to try and start taking over a bit more and trying to choose loads based off the RPE, so the reps and reserve, however you want to term it, and try and find a better, a better load selection for that session, so you can maybe go heavier. So right from week one, if like eighty percent by five, so eighty percent should be an eight rep max. So a set of five at eighty percent should relatively should actually be an RPE seven. So you might come in and find out that you're over recovered. So maybe if you were to rep out at 80% that day, you could have got nine. So it's an RP6. So right from the get, you should be doing your... So you got to start somewhere. Any starting points arbitrary. So we're setting it at 80% for a set of five on RP8. Come in, do the set, reflect on it. That I probably had more than two left there. I maybe had four left there or I had three left there. Or maybe you do the set and you've, over, you've overshot it. Maybe you had... Two, you maybe had one rep left for whatever reason you felt shit that day and you come in and start the block and you do the 235 for five and it's more like an RPE nine. What you might do in that scenario is hold that load and repeat it the next week and then maybe try again RPE eight and that would be progression. So again, it's, it also allows us to gauge, we can gauge the progression week to week, not just by the load, but how the load moves. So if you're doing the same workout as last time, but with less effort, you know you've got stronger, you know you've progressed. So it just gives you another um, way of objectifying training, tra training, a way of objectifying how you feel, to put it subjectively in a way that's intelligible, that you can use as a framework to try and help guide future load progression. You'll see going forward as well, we're gonna set out the goal RPE for the blocks. Even when we go on later on, in your strongest year to use schemes that aren't RPE based, that aren't auto regulatory, we will suggest a goal RPE just to kind of help your framework, help your thinking to try and like, so the whole thing is we're trying to make training as, um, as constructive as possible. We're trying to give you tools. We're trying to give you ways of thinking, ways of, of guiding your training where you're going to end up with the best outcome possible given the circumstances in front of you. Okay, that's going to do this video. Hope you found it useful. Hope you enjoy this block, and I'll check you for block nine for the explainer video. Have a good one. Cheers. Ooh, this is awkward. Stop.